I'm live. Oh, good morning, mums and dads. Let me hit the mute button before I hear myself again and make this magic happen. How are we all? Are we all good? Come on, there we go. Oh, good. We're back to having a frozen laptop again this morning. Bless. Okay, I'm just going to do a little camera readjustment and a little zoom. No, oh, we'll stay there. That's good. Welcome to the third day of the Great International Craft Show and day three of our Black Friday big brand sale. Today is, today is Saturday. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed my live Facebook this morning. It was a bit of a ripper. There was a lot going on there, wasn't there? <laughs> um, if you didn't catch me live this morning, treat yourself. Go back and have a bit of a watch. Um, I love me a filter and had a bit of a play this morning. So that was really, really fun. Um, and we had a bit of a tour, had a bit of a chat. Um, Karen says, oh, Karen, Karen, it was different. It was unusual, it was nice. It made you giggle, did it not? And that, that was my goal. Love that. So we, uh, as part of the Natalie May scrapbooking, part of the online show this weekend and the big brand sale, we have got a, a huge day planned for you. Um, jump online to nataliemay.com.au and today you will get, where's my piece of paper? The Vicky Booten Day. So Vicky Booten at 20% off today, Stencil Girl Products at 20% off today, and Lindy's Gang Products at 20% off today. Uh, you'll also find Natalie May's scrapbooking products at 25% off today. Unheard of. Unheard of. Uh, jump into the Facebook group, the Natalie May Scrapbooking Creative Community, uh, to meet some like-minded, wonderful, awesome people and share your goodness around. So today I'm going to do a little creating using the Vicky Booten Sweet Rush paper. Um, I've got this gorgeous little six by eight pad here and I have just in the last three minutes decided that what I'm gonna create here today, we might whip up as a little kit. So you will be able to purchase the kit, that I, the project that I'm about to create uh, and you will be able to purchase that, purchase that for 25 bucks. Is that what we just decided? Yeah. Yep. Excellent. What are we going to call it? Hey? What are we going to call it? We're going to call it the... We're going to call it the... I don't know. We'll come up. We'll come up with something. So that'll be available online to purchase in about half an hour or so. And we're going to do some really easy, fun techniques um, that... I've actually done a couple of these techniques. We're going to do a bit of a smush sort of technique. And I've just realised how dirty my mat is here. Uh, we're going to have a bit of a play with a few techniques and create a fun scrapbook page using some stamps as well. So let's just crack right into it. Uh, the Sweet Rush paper is really, really nice. So there is a beautiful range of papers in here and they're double-sided, which I love and you, the pad, when you purchase the pad, you actually get two of each paper. For today, I'm going to, with the kit that you're going to be able to purchase online, you'll get half a pad of paper and a full packet of these stamps. How does that sound? That sounds like a bit of a bargain. I don't really have much of a plan here other than showing you some really simple and easy techniques. And I'm going to use some plain white Kaisercraft cardstock. Um, you, in your kit, you will get a little piece of acetate like this. 
unlike yesterday's smushy paper bag, plastic bag that um, Louise thought was absolutely hysterical. Um, but yes, we are going to just do some really lovely smush techniques and create a bit of a mixed media background, layer on with some stamps, and then we're going to finish off with some patterned papers. Um, so grab your cup of coffee. I've got mine here. Uh, and let's sit down and make some make something pretty. I'm going to start off with some Distress inks. So I have got here squeezed lemonade. And I'm going to go straight onto my messy mat like this. And I'm really going to crack on some colour like that. And then I'm going to give it a light spray with water. Then grab my piece of acetate and I'm going to get a bit of a smush on up in about a quarter of my page. Okay, so this is going to be all about some really easy, fun techniques that you can transfer over. Now, what's happening here is, you know what, that's worked so much better than I was going to do, than I thought it would. Um, and I'm going to take it, you know, about a quarter there. All right, and then with my baby wipe, we're just gonna wipe that down. Wipe off of our piece of acetate. Which is stuck to my mat. And I'm just gonna wipe that off with a piece of paper towel. And I'll bring that up to the camera for you to have a look at. So the color that I used there is Distress Oxide in Squeezed Lemonade. I think you all bought them yesterday with our Tim Holtz sale, which was pretty cool. So you can see that smoosh. And I'm just quickly going to heat set that. Now I'm going to heat set that so that when I add the next color, I can layer over the top. So grab yourself a heat tool. So heat tools we currently have on special for the incredibly awesome price of $14.95. Um, Louise, could you just have a look in the top drawer of my Distress Oxides for an orange or an abandoned coral, please? Or you could just, yeah. Perfect. I'm pretty sure that's the colour that I want, unless that one there is called... That one's better. Okay, so the next colour I'm going to add on is I want to add a little bit of bright persimmon. And I want to do exactly the same thing. Now you can do this background with any of the Tim Holtz Distress Oxides or Distress Inks even. Okay, bit of water on there, not too much, we don't want to saturate it. And then with my bit of plastic, I'm going to grab it. And you can see how it sits to the acetate. This is a super easy, fun technique that anybody can do. Um, it has been around for years and years and years. I have done layouts using this technique probably 10 years ago, I reckon. Now, I'm just concentrating on getting rid of these lines now. So I'm gonna lay them up. And now with my dirty piece of acetate, I'm just going to layer up over the top here. So we're doing a little blend into the other side. Wipe that off. I'm gonna put some pink here. Wipe that off. So that colour I just used was right persimmon. You could very easily jump in with a abandoned coral. Carved pumpkin, something along those lines would work just as well. The next colour I'm going to add is picked raspberry. Now I've just re-inked all of these so I know that they're nice and juicy. Good morning, Rosie. Okay, and I'm going to go in again with this gorgeous pink and go like that.
and I'm just kissing the paper with my color. My photo I know is going to go in the middle here, so I'm not fussed about what it looks like here because I've still got pattern papers to put on and I still have my photographs to put on because a scrapbook page is all about the photograph, not necessarily what's going on in the background. All of this mixed media stuff that we're putting in the background should all come back to focusing on, you know, bringing our focus back to our photo. Okay, so that one was called Picked Raspberry. So this, you if you don't have Distress Oxides, you could easily use uh, something like, so any sort of water-based, anything that's going to react with water. A permanent ink is definitely not going to work. Right, so now this colour is called Salty Ocean. And I'm going to stamp it on like that. And I'm overlapping a little into my pink. Just kissing that paper. Like so. And I'm happy with that. cleaning off that and now the last colour will be peacock feathers which is a beautiful teal so as you can see I'm kind of putting them in a bit of an order that's working so the colours aren't going to muddy up when they overlap so I know that putting a, a green or a teal here is going to be my my best option so peacock feathers um, is going to be the perfect combination you could also use a lime green uh, in, in a Tim Holtz, you could use Twisted Citron, you could use Evergreen Bow, you could use any of those colours. That's going to work really, really well. So this kit will be available online very, very shortly uh, and we will be, oh, be able to add it to your order this weekend. Oh, okay. Call it the, what should we call it? We'll call it the Sweet Rush Smush. <laughs> I may change the name. That was terrible, that was terrible Louise tells me. Uh, um, okay, so how about... Oh, I like that. How about... Just call it Natalie May Sweet Rush and I'll, I'll come up with a witty name later. <laughs> there we go. Done, done, done. Okay, my little piece of acetate has come in handy. Radio. so that's worked well. I didn't dry those layers off in between like I started with, but these here have kind of gone a bit green, which is the ideal situation here. Now I'm gonna add some stamping over the top of that. So I've built a, a lovely background here. Coffee break. Good morning, Michelle. Oh, there you go, Sweet Rush Mashup. That's good. Thanks, Michelle Pentland. You're my new favourite person today. Yeah, the stamp is from Print Shop, but the colours are inspired by, by Sweet Rush. Oh. Mash up, that's right. We're mashing up the colours. All right. <clears throat> This is the stamp set that you will get in your kit. <coughs> Excuse me. You will also require a, a couple of coloured ink pads. Now, you can use the ink pads that you've just used to ink up with. I'm going to go with an archival ink in a few of these colours. So I've pulled out some of my archival inks that I have here in various colors these little ones are little ranger inks i've got yellow orange pink i'm going to have to play around a bit here and see what works um i don't need purple maybe that green 
could go there. But I'm going to test all of these before we start to make sure that I'm getting the best the best colours. Uh, the print shop stamps, these are excellent value for money, these little guys. Um, I do love that Vicky Booten does some amazing, amazing designs. And this set, like I just said, you will get this full stamp set in your kit for this layout that I am creating. All right, so let's just do a little tester here and see if my colours are going to work. I'm just going to peel this one off. So these are a clear stamp and you'll need a, an acrylic block. And I'll start with the orange and let's see if this orange is ink pads going to work. Absolutely. Will the right persimmon be better? Let's have a look. Same, same. I actually think the right persimmon was going to be better because it is a little bit darker. You can see that. So doing a little swatch and testing is absolutely vital. Always so important. Uh, the fossilized amber is the color of this one on here. So that yellow is good. Put the lid back on. And squeeze lemonade, let's see how that one looks. So the squeeze lemonade kind, will kind of disappear. All right, so I definitely want to go with this darker one because I'm going to stamp over that area. So I'm going to keep that there. That's going to go there. Swatching is important. I do it with just about everything. Never put anything onto your page without swatching first. I know that picked raspberry is exactly the same colour. I'm not even going to test it with the Distress Oxide. I know that that one there is going to be perfect. This is where I kind of go a little bit, ooh, I'm not sure. So we're going to test faded jeans with the over the top here. I have a sinking suspicion that this one is going to be a little bit dark. Um, and then I used Salty Ocean. So let's test Salty Ocean and see which one I like more. I don't know. I think I like the um, Distress Oxide better. No, Louise, I don't know that I'm going to need your expertise on this one. I think your um, professional opinion can stay um, on, on your side of the room. And then over here, I don't have the exact same colour in an archival ink. I currently have got Mermaid Lagoon. Well, that's pretty good. That Mermaid Lagoon is going to be better here. Hmm. And this is the importance of swatching. And then Peacock Feathers is going to be great over that. Winner. Okay. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So we've got all of these awesome stamps. So I've swatched. I know what's going to work great. What I want to do now is create some amazing layered stamps over here. So the great thing about these stamps is they're all exactly the same size. So I can layer them all up. I'm just going to grab myself another acrylic block. Won't be a second. Just so that I've got a couple going at the same time. I do love this circle, this outer circle. So I'm going to keep that one on a block by itself. And then these ones, I'm just going to alternate between oh, peeling, peeling, peeling. Peeling, and I'll come back to those ones. And I'm going to go 
one on that side of my block, one on that side of my block, one down there, one down there. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to start with yellow because the yellow is, I don't want to, because I'm a bit lazy with my ink cleaning, my stamp cleaning, I don't want to contaminate the colours too much. So I'm going to add a few little, oh, that's so cute. Just go with two of that design and same colours. One up there. Oh, that's good. I'm going to overlap down into this colour. Love that. And I'm going to pop a squirkly one in there. Oh, that's good. Now, we've got the word on one of the stamps. We've got love this. And then we've got the plain circle. So I'm going to mix those up. Uh, and I'm going to mix those up by adding in a little orange for dark, for, for depth. over the top. So using a clear stamp block, we're gonna get a layered, a layered look in places. And then I wanted to use the plain circle. I can easily pop orange on top of yellow. And I like the idea of layering these up as well. Dun, 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 dun. And I'm just going to leave it like that. So we're going to start these nice little layers happening. So I don't need my yellow anymore. I'm going to put that away. I'm going to keep my orange out. I'll put my peach raspberry over there. Right, let's get some ripe persimmon on next. So how's everybody's Saturday morning going? It's a little, uh, it's warm and overcast and a bit weird here in Adelaide today. It's gone cold. Hey? It's gone cold. It's gone cold. It's gone cold. It's raining. It's not raining. It is raining. Oh, goodness me. Sorry, mate. Trevor and Jessica are racing today, so I suspect they'll be home before lunch. Poor buggers. They can't seem to get a week. Three weekends in a row now, we have had the dodgiest of dodgy weathers, weathers? weather events here in Adelaide. Um, we had our big, the big storm here not all that long ago. Uh, the big storm was pretty full on. The big storm knocked out power at our house for two days. Um, and we had storm damage here in the studio as well. Um, we <laughs> There was a lot going on. And I'm going to pop another one of Love This smack bang in the middle like that. Okay, we're getting there. Now, this, this design is not at all new. This is not a new, exciting, unique design that has been um, thought up by me. It's been done for years and years and years, and I have done very similar layouts over years as well in a similar sort of style. Um, okay, I'm going to keep my orange. No, I'm not. So, yes, Adelaide's been copying a, copying a hammering in the, uh, with the weather. And consequently, nobody, so quite a few people have been able to play sport for three weekends in a row. Um, I think a lot of them might be back today. Um, I'm just going to close this chat box on my screen. One minute. There we go. Um, so the, the picked raspberry is quite dark, so I just need to be aware of the depth of this one. 
and go with less less dominating images so I'm going to go with that and I'm going to go off the page with it as well because I think that little spotty one might be my favorite um yeah so there you go Done, done, put that. Right, knowing when to not do it. As Natalie then goes in with a strong one, but I know that my image is gonna go here. So I'll do a second stamp off the side there. And put your lid on before you get any further. So overlapping the orange, and the yellow was the main thing here because those colors are quite light. Um, but with going on with some of these others, I only really do need to do one color. Hello, Susan. Oh, off for a beach swim. Oh, stop it. Beach swim is a bit of a novelty here for us at the moment. I don't think anybody's been swimming at the beach for a while we've got way too much happening weather wise for that to happen well I know I don't want to go anywhere near the water not at the moment oh that's a bit strong and that's a bit strong so we need to balance that out with some depth over there and I'll connect that to something else for a bit more depth So welcome to those of you just tuning in for the first time. My name is Natalie and you are watching me create a, that's not a good colour. You're watching me create a scrapbooking project that is going, using Vicky Booten products, that is going to be available or currently is available. Yeah, it's up. It's up? With no photo. And up with no photo. Okay, so this little kit is available for you to purchase on online right now um, and you are currently watching the instructions for it and you will get a kit that includes the stamp set you'll get a kit that includes um, some pattern papers and you just need to supply your own inks okay so something a little bit different That works for me and knowing when to stop is important so all of my stamps I'm going to pop aside for the time being and we have got a layered background perfect liking it okay Photos. So we've created a bit of a pretty background. I'm going to have two photos that go, say, here and here. Um, I would normally cut the barcode strip off the bottom of my paper, but I haven't quite got to that yet. Uh, I'm going to have a bit of a look through my papers. First of all, I'm going to choose something that I want for my title because the title uh, is important. And this pattern paper set has got is mostly pattern papers with not a whole lot of words. So I'm gonna use simple things for my title. Grabbing out my Crafter's Companion trimmer. My little, the small trimmer is going to be the go-to today because it fits perfectly in the, in this trimmer. I do like knowing what my title is going to be and then working around that. And then I'm going to take some pattern papers and just layer up the backgrounds. So my photos are going to be matted and I like this blue. And then there's something on the other side there. And you're probably, you're definitely going to have enough in your kit to, to 
to create a couple of layers for this one and that's really important. Now I've got a lot of colour going on so I do need to think very carefully about what's going to what's going to be too overpowering. I would really love to do to you know to use this but is it gonna work? I don't know. We could just do I'll pull it out anyway and have a look. This colour works nicely this colour on the back works better. The butterflies don't really match in. Uh, the colours work. The spots, look at that, they match in quite nicely. But I don't love the fact that the back on this, I'm not going to put it on my layer because the back is off-white um, and I'm going for more white tones. The green's pretty great. I'm not after purples. Um, orange could work. I love the depth of this. This is probably my favourite out of the whole pack. I reckon I can use that. So there we go. Let's let's now mat some photos and start creating our page. I've got my title there. I want my photo to stand out. So I have cut photo mats here. My photos are going to be... I've got three and three quarters by five and three quarters. When I mat photos, when I put photos down on my projects, I always make sure that they are a little bit under six by four. Because if you put a standard six by four photograph on your project, what you will find is uh, you'll probably cut a little bit off the side and or cut something out of the background. Um, there we go. So that's going to sit there like that. Don't know that I want flowers. I might just map my other photo. Not quite enough there. I'll map my other photo with this colour. That's going to work. So instead of using foam tape underneath, I today have chosen a piece of cardboard. I always lift up my photos, give them a little bit of height to make sure that they have a bit of shadow sitting underneath them to create dimension. And as you can see, I'm not a measure and cut person. I trust my eye, okay? When you are a creative person, you tend to trust your eye more than anything else. Now, you'll notice I'll put the teal over this side and the blue over this side. Um, that will probably go down there. Don't need those pieces. I might come back to that. I'm, I'm a bit unsure about the flowers. I don't, I'm not loving it. I do like a little bit of depth. So this word one here, ooh, ooh. There we go, let's use that. That's about one and a half inches wide. And kind of cut that bit off the top. Slide a bit of rainbow in there. I might just keep those and cut a couple of these flowers out for embellishments. That might be a good idea. Uh, popping in, I'm just going to slide some bits and pieces in and around now. I think that that's probably what I'm going to do. This one here, I'm going to cut this one, cut another stripey piece. <laughs> in on this side, or maybe even a bit of down here. I actually think that over here is a bit better. Little strip of love hearts. And slide in there. Do, 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 do. Got a little bit of pink going on here. I'm all about the simple strips of paper. Okay, I only ever cut down where possible what I can see. There's no point shoving all of this extra stuff in underneath when you're not going to see it. I am a firm believer in that. 
Louise, do we have any 12 by 12 pieces of paper with um, flowers on them? Singles? You know what I'm where I'm going? Oh yeah, I like that little bit of depth up there. Yes. And I need to balance it with a little bit of depth down the bottom. Something like that. Have we got enough to pop in the kit? Probably not a whole sheet. Probably not a whole. Let me have a look. Uh, perfect sunny. Before I go and cut anything else up. Uh, I think I might pop. Lost my paper pad. You see where this is all coming together now? Here's another full sheet that I haven't used yet. And no, I've used that one. I don't really want to use the butterflies. Oh, the green. That green. Hey? You can use this one. Excellent. Thank you. Are you gonna, is this a half or a whole? I need all the flowers. Do I want to use some of this lime? Yeah, I might use a little bit of that lime green. And I'm, I'm not doing fancy measurements. As you can see, I'm just tucking and lifting and sliding to create lots of... Okay, you can use all that Thanks. Do you want me to fussy cut one out? I really, I really love for you to fussy cut that out, but I think hell might freeze over before you, you do that. But surprise me. Surprise me, Lou. Mm. So I've got love hearts up here, but I need to balance it with some love hearts down there. So I need to find that love heart. I can cut those out, Louise. Don't yeah. torture yourself, babe. <laughs> um, I'm going to grab some more love hearts and slide those in as well. Oh, there's a few of you tuned in this morning, which is nice. Look at that. Perfect. And then this title needs to be needs to sit up on something. So I'm going to pop that aside and do that last. And I'm going to stick all of these down now. So this is approximately how, you know, where I want everything to go. I do love this mixed up bit on the side here. So I'm going to start with some foam tape. No, I'm not. I'm going to start with some... I'm going to use glue. I'm going to finish the sentence. Uh, all right. A pair of scissors. Here, use these scissors. They're going to be much better for you. They are the best fussy cutting scissors around, those ones. Well, my favourites anyway. Okay, we're 40 minutes in. And we're doing really well. So I'm going to take this one, the one that we took off the top, and I'm just going to cut a little bit of a bit of that going in there, a bit of that going in there, a bit of that there, a bit of that there. Okay. Because I like a little banner. I like a little Eric banner. I'm going to pop a bit of glue on the back. Not too much. Now, when I glue, I tend to not... I tend to not use too much glue. Um, so, for those of you who are asking, I will... On the instructions, which you are watching, but when, I, when you purchase the kit and you do the... You get the printout, I will list the colours that I have used, Okay. I won't let you fly totally blind. I'm going to pop some foam tape underneath that to lift that up. Uh, so, and then the colours um, that I have used, Naomi has also listed here in the live. But you will find, I will give you a list of the colours that I have used so that you can find something same but different. So my two pieces of foam tape on under my photograph are just going straight in the middle. And that is because we want to be able to slide things in and around it. And that's really, really important. 
okay? Everything is about the photograph when we are scrapbooking. So photographing, having the photo front and center, you always need to start with where your photo is going to go. Very, very important. Um, there we go. So scrapbooking is all about the photograph. And then I'm going to tuck this one a little bit down here. And then everything else is just going to slide in around it. So this little guy here, okay? Now, like I said, I haven't given you measurements because there's no point. You can see that it's going to be quick and simple to slide in these elements. You shouldn't need to do much more than that. Except for I just stuck that down. Excuse me, come undone. Oh, that's actually a great spot for that. Let's commit to that. This is what happens when you use good, good quality foam tape. Oh, there we go. A little bit too good. There we go. All right, so I've got this bit here is going to slide in here. Now, if you're using a good quality adhesive, then you're not going to need to do much more in the way of glues and, you know, just use a little bit of glue is going to do the trick. Um, I will never cover the entire back of my project in, in glue. Glue and paper are generally not a great combination unless you are using a glue that is made for it. So you can see just by doing a strip like that is ample to secure, but no more than that. Okay, that's sliding in there. This little guy, is he gonna go on top or underneath? Okay, that one there. Pop in here, and then this little guy is opposite there. Okay, it's all about the balance. And I can I can tuck and slide everything in, and I'm really happy with that. Now I'm going to foam tape this. It needs to sit on a on a piece of coloured something colour. I might use this green because I've got green over here for balance and I'm going to use a piece of foam tape. So the ultra new foam tape that I'm using, I mentioned in the live yesterday, I don't do things by halves. I've got this big guy here because it's excellent value for money. Um, I don't know if we have any left in stock but uh, good quality foam tape is imperative to your creating. So I'm just gonna pop some tape on the back, pop that on there like so, and then I'm going to be brutal and cut it with scissors. Add some more foam tape to that background to lift it up. So really easy, pop that on there. And going with the less is best with the adhesive so that I can tuck and slide. I can always add more glue later and or more double-sided tape later, but I find I won't need to because I'm using a good quality product to start with. Okay, so there's my title, there's the base of my page. What needs to happen next is I need to get fussy cutting on some embellishments. So my lovely crafty assistant here. You have to. Oh, what you mean I have to cut these out properly, Louise? Yeah. Goodness me. I've just done the basics. She's just done the basics. I'm gonna start with this big key image here. Um, I'm not into fussy cutting all of the details. I keep, I go super loose with my fussy cutting because once you've cut it out and there's nothing to compare it with, Nobody else is going to be able to judge you and say, well, she's missed a bit there. Guess what? Nobody cares. If you want to do it yourself and make that perfect, then knock yourself out. But what I'm doing here is focusing on 
the key image, which is this flower, and then I'm going to cut that leaf. And I'm going to come down here and cut that leaf. And come up here. So this will be, and this guy's going to come in here like that, right? Wow, that was a fluke. Uh, Must have been the fussy cutting. Must have been Louise's fussy cutting. <laughs> So we do have some really great little fussy cutting scissors available as well on special this weekend. Um, if you like a smaller scissor to use, then $3.95 for the little pink scissors. You'll find those in the show specials category. Um, I've got big man hands. I find it much, much easier for me personally to use my Tim Holtz scissors. And in saying that, I've always got at least three pairs of them floating around on my desk. So consequently, um, you just need to have a pair of scissors handy, whatever works for you. I do believe that we may have sold out of the Tim Holtz scissors yesterday, um, but... All right, that's a good start. That's a good start. Thanks, boss. All right, I'm going to pop that there, and I'm going to pop that up with a bit of foam tape. How am I going for time? Oh, nailing it. Perfect. I'm gonna double foam tape that. So I'm gonna put my two pieces of foam tape together like that and like that. Pop that off to somewhere else. The fussy cutting is gonna be the bit that's gonna take the longest guys, but you'll be able to, what I will do is on the, you can embellish it however you like, of course, but it sits up and on top just like that. I could have done a better job than that, but you know, that can go up there. That I will put up there once I fussy cut that a little bit more. Not that I'm bagging your excellence and <laughs> excellent work, Lou. Um, I'm having a little bit of a think about where my flowers are going. I don't want to put yellow on yellow because it's going to disappear. But what I want to do is I want to make it pop. So I could quite easily slide this guy down in under here. Uh, and this one is another beautiful bright yellow, so it might be nice up in here. I've got a little orange one in here as well, so that could probably slide in down under there. So shortly what I'll do off camera is do a couple of, a couple more fussy cut bits and oh I like that one. I'm going to slide half of that in under there. And then we have finished off this layout. Done. Bright. Punchy. Easy. The one thing that I will do is I'm going to take my black pen of choice. And because I have got black lines in my title, I will do a, a black pen doodle line all the way around my page. And I do this to help tie in any blacks within the photo. I've got a really loose mixed media style project here. So a black line all the way around gives it that, you know what, I made this myself kind of finish, okay? So if you find that doing a, a black line is something that you struggle with, feel free to use a ruler or use your trimmer as a guide. Um, and that will work just fine. Shazam. Right, and that's it from me. I'm gonna fussy cut these out, take a photo of this project, and then we can pop it up online, pop the photo up online for you to have a look, but you can add this to your cart today. The kit will include the stamp set, the card stock, the big sheet of flowers to fussy cut, and half a pad of Sweet Rush, six by eight paper, and the kit is selling for $25, and we have very limited amounts of these kits available, so please um, jump on that. Uh, I hope you're all having a fabulous day, and I look forward to seeing you soon. We have got 
All of our specials, nataliemay.com.au. All Vicky Booten products today are 20% off. <laughs> I had a brain fade. Um, Stencil Girl, 20% off. Lindy's Gang, 20% off. And Natalie May scrapbooking products are 25% off. Jump online to nataliemay.com.au. And I look forward to chatting with you all soon. See you online again at 1.30 Adelaide time. Bye.